I analyzed 24 studies across several supplements for skin and discovered varying levels of evidence for slowing and, in some cases, reversing skin aging. I'd like to walk you through which three supplements are considered effective, along with the certainty of evidence, and I'll include a fourth habit of mine that I consider critical to this process as well. If you've been following my work for some time, you know that I've warmed up to collagen peptides. Initially, the evidence was, well, lukewarm, and I still wouldn't say that the evidence is overwhelming, but it has me inclined to lean in the direction of their benefit. Again, if you've been following my work, you know that the common criticism levied against collagen peptides is the fact that their amino acid profile, those are the constituent molecules making up a protein, is, well, trash compared to a more complete protein source. That is true, but the assumption of effectiveness is based on only single amino acids entering your bloodstream when consuming collagen peptides, which, as we know from studies like this one, that is not the case. When we consume proteins, the peptidases and other cleavage enzymes do break the protein down into smaller components for intestinal absorption by the epithelial cells that line the intestine. However, that study shows in humans that we can absorb not only single amino acids, but di and tripeptides, which is where collagen peptides shine. Again, because we aren't as interested in the single amino acids, which pale in comparison to other protein sources, we can niche down onto the di and tripeptides. In studies looking at varying types of peptides on cells called fibroblasts, which are responsible for the generation of collagen and hyaluronic acid, both of which are components of our skin, researchers identified that treatment with peptides led to an increase in hyaluronic acid production by these cells, as seen here. The larger the bar, the more hyaluronic acid. The left bar is the control, so no peptides added. The middle is the addition of the peptides. And the right is an additional condition for comparisons where the cells were exposed to fibroblast growth factor, which is basically a stimulator of fibroblasts. As you can see, the peptides led to an increase in hyaluronic acid. So why? Well, again, it's not because of the actual amino acids most likely, but rather the peptides themselves may bind to a receptor or series of receptors like those mentioned in this review. To be clear, these receptors already bind to collagen fibers in our skin and cause a series of intracellular changes within the skin cells. Think of the fibroblasts that then stimulate the production of more full collagen fibers. However, the researchers mention multiple receptors that also bind to the same amino acid linkages seen when consuming collagen peptides. So there is the possibility that the peptides themselves could enact this role. But if we return to this study, the researchers briefly mentioned that there is some evidence for peptide transporters similar to those found in the intestines are also found in fibroblasts allowing the peptide to enter the cell and directly influence the cell signaling to the pro-collagen, pro-hyaluronic acid producing. Anyway, those are some of the mechanisms, but obviously we can't rely on mechanisms as a conclusive force. So when we open human trials, there is a good amount of agreement on their effectiveness. For example, this meta-analysis of 19 studies, these researchers indicate that beneficial impact of collagen supplementation as seen here. We're looking at skin elasticity. With all the studies on the left side and all the study results pictorially depicted on the right side. If the little line uh, moves to the right of the middle line, that's zero. That means that the individual study indicates a benefit of collagen supplementation. Now, you can see that some studies show an effect and others show, well, <laughs> the opposite. In totality, which we can see represented by the black diamond at the bottom, there is overall more evidence in favor of an effect than against. Now, for those statistics inclined, you'll notice that the high degree of interstudy heterogeneity confirmed by the statistics as well. There are a plethora of reasons for that, which I can't get into. Otherwise, I'll lose the people who just don't care about this stuff. Uh, I likely already have. But if you look at some of the other measures, the results are consistent, including subgroup analyses and sensitivity analyses. 
That all said, I still think that we need more studies, especially independently funded studies. But so far, I feel comfortable indicating that collagen peptides are effective for improving skin elasticity, skin hydration, and reducing wrinkling, as well as some reversing of that wrinkling. So collagen peptides are a yes, and they're my second favorite skin aging technique. I'll discuss my number one in a while. First, remember that when we discussed the fibroblasts, they were likely producing more hyaluronic acid from being exposed to the collagen peptides. Well, since collagen isn't the only component of skin, why wouldn't we just supplement with hyaluronic acid? Well, I crown you a science smarty pants because that's the second ingredient that I analyzed, hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is absorbed in the intestines according to these researchers. However, the exact mechanism is unknown, and yet there's a key detail on the absorption that probably makes a big impact on hyaluronic acid's effectiveness. We'll get into that in just a bit. We know it's absorbed, and we also know that hyaluronic acid has many complex effects across the body, but its incorporation into our skin is probably not direct. In essence, we absorb hyaluronic acid. It gets cleaved by enzymes called hyaluronidases, which break up the molecule into small fragments, or even into its constituent parts known as oligosaccharides, complex sugars. And then it gets rebuilt by an enzyme called hyaluronic acid synthase and released into the skin structure. Why would the body break something down just to rebuild it again? Well, like I said, hyaluronic acid metabolism is complex and it's tightly regulated because dysregulation can lead to <laughs> some major problems, two of which being uh, pro-inflammation and even cancer risk. So the body controls the levels by balancing what we consume and what we produce. I can go into those mechanisms some other time, but for those clutching their pearls, don't worry, hyaluronic acid supplementation isn't going to suddenly give you cancer. There's more to it than that. But again, I just can't discuss it in detail because, well, we're talking about skin aging. Anyway, hyaluronic acid has an extreme passionate, at least I imagine at least, uh, it's not like we ever had a heart to heart, but love for water. So once it's released by the fibroblasts and other cells, it can plump up the skin, reducing wrinkles, increasing elasticity and moisture of the skin. But again, like collagen, is there any human evidence of that? So I analyzed 11 studies to find the answer to that. And I have to say, some of the studies are absolute dog poop. Horribly done, horribly biased. That said, there is still a smattering of passable studies that are placebo controlled. In one study, for example, the researchers compared hyaluronic supplementation to placebo and found a noticeable effect of hyaluronic acid supplementation on reducing skin wrinkling. We can actually see some of that data here. The darker bar is the placebo and the lighter gray bar is the hyaluronic acid condition. The lower it goes, the greater reduction in wrinkle depth and volume. Uh, so that's a good thing. I suppose I don't need to spell it out for you, smarty pants. <laughs> Another study also confirmed these results. I would list more of these studies, but uh, many of them fall under the uh, dog poop category. Additionally, I think that all studies are industry funded. If that's a deal breaker for you, I certainly sympathize. It isn't for me, but it does lower my confidence in the repeatability of these results. But I promise you that we'd return to this digestion and absorption bit because it does matter which hyaluronic acid you consume. It's believed, again, by the Scientific Review that consuming high molecular weight, meaning a very large version of hyaluronic acid molecule, is contraindicated because it is less likely to be absorbed. You should be aiming for a low molecular weight hyaluronic acid, if possible, for the greatest bang for your buck. Okay, so the evidence is certainly weaker for hyaluronic acid, but it does lean in the direction of being a skin benefit. I'd like to point out that I use these molecules and supplements in a particular way myself. So if you're interested in hearing which supplements I use and how I use them, I have a video discussing all the details in the Physionic Insiders. I'll link that in the description. I'd love to have you join. But 
Let's go into the third supplement. Actually, you know what? Let's actually keep that one for last. It's a unique one, and I haven't heard many people discuss it. Let me first mention what I think is critical for fighting skin aging. This is my number one tip. When it comes to skin aging, there's two groupings of factors that cause skin aging. One is called intrinsic aging, and the other is extrinsic. Intrinsic aging comes from all different molecules and imperfections that our cells produce over a lifetime, like the production of free radicals, which are damaging molecules that tear away at the integrity of our cell components. Extrinsic aging comes from molecules that we consume that are damaging. Could be something as serious as, I don't know, cyanide to something more mild like alcohol. Or it could be from radiation, which causes DNA damage. Anything outside the body, essentially. So now, what is something that we are all exposed to on a daily basis that without which we would cease to exist? Is that enough of a hint or do you want another? Okay, uh, we, we revolve around it and plants feed off of it. Got it? That's right, the sun. You have to protect your skin from the sun. Now, I know there are some people that believe that getting sun exposure is important, and it is for other things, but that doesn't mean that it's good for your skin. It isn't, it's awful for your skin. Often you'll hear arguments about getting vitamin D from the sun, and the sun is good because it's natural, and yada, yada, yada. It's all nonsense. Yes, vitamin D is important for your health, but considering that we can have the best of both worlds, we should probably just take advantage. It's perfectly reasonable to supplement with vitamin D while protecting your skin. As a matter of fact, in this study, researchers showed that people who wore sunscreen more regularly over 4.5 years of the study experienced, and let me emphasize here, no progression of skin aging. None. Quantified, it was 24% less skin aging compared to those who only occasionally wore sunscreen. So imagine if they wore sunscreen all the time and compared against a group that never wore it. The effects would be even greater. Other studies of varying quality confirm these results as well. Of course, this doesn't even mention the skin cancer protection effects. I can't stress enough how important sunscreen is. Forget the two supplements that I mentioned earlier and the one coming up. The number one priority should be preventative sunblock. Anything broad spectrum and anything SPF 15 and upward, and you'll be looking sickly pale like me in no time. Okay, I'll get off my sunscreen slathered high horse and discuss this next unique molecule. We've already covered collagen peptides and hyaluronic acid, so what's another molecule that could be a benefit for your skin? I'll give you a hint. It starts with an A. A, as, not a donkey, but astaxanthin, close. Astaxanthin is a potent antioxidant molecule because of its unique shape. Notice the two ionone rings on either end. They're capable of quenching damaging free radicals that we discussed earlier with about 40 times stronger antioxidant activity as beta carotene, which is often touted as a beneficial skin supplement. I cracked open this meta-analysis that pooled 11 studies to find out astaxanthin's role in skin aging. And here is where things diverge a bit from the previous results, because while the other two supplements were beneficial for elasticity of the skin along with de-wrinkling of the skin, astaxanthin failed to show a benefit against wrinkles. We see here, again, the studies are on the left and the green squares with the lines coming out of them are the study results. I won't walk you through how to read this beyond just mentioning that if the studies move to the left of the middle line, that's zero, they favor astaxanthin. Now, at first glance, it seems like most of them do. So why no effect? 
Well, we can't let our eyes and bias deceive us. Even if we focus on the black diamond, it clearly seems to move to the left. But the analysis indicates that the certainty of an effect with a p-value of 0.11, which is above the 0.05 cutoff. Now, is it possible that the effect is simply mild and we don't have enough studies to make a judgment? Yeah, it's possible, along with other possibilities, but as it currently stands, astaxanthin does not reduce wrinkles. Well then, why do I add it to this list? Well, mainly because in measures of skin elasticity and moisture content, astaxanthin does show a benefit. For example, looking at elasticity, this time if the studies move to the right of the middle line, there's a benefit of astaxanthin. And not just visually, but statistically confirmed, the results indicate an effect. Now, I should caution that this analysis did indicate a moderate to high risk of bias meaning that some studies were not designed ideally. So it would be prudent to have more and more rigorous studies confirming these effects. Still, as it stands, astaxanthin shows a specific benefit to skin that may not affect wrinkles themselves. But look, my guess is that you're interested in anti-aging and this video right here offers some more information on exactly that. I'll speak with you over there. Bye.